Thank you very much uh, uh, for the introduction and thank you particularly for this uh, the invitation at this uh, very nice and well attended uh, meeting. Uh, what I would like to do today, and uh, I think I am one of several speakers who will allude to the same questions, is uh, to uh, discuss the uh, how the immune and stromal classification of colorectal cancer can guide immunotherapies. So all cancers, solid tumors, and particularly colorectal cancers, grow in a, in a microenvironment, which is made of all cells of the immune and the uh, uh, inflammatory system introduced by uh, Pierre Coulis, T cells, B cells, NK cells, mast cells, dendritic cells, etc. And this slide is aimed to show that this microenvironment is an organized landscape. You have cells in the center of the tumor, in the tumor core. You have cells in the invasive margin. And you have lymphoid dilates adjacent to the tumor, which behave as tertiary lymphoid structures with mature dendritic cells, T and B cells. We believe that these are major sites for generating anti-tumor immunity. And of course, you have fibroblasts and uh, uh, endothelial cells which support and, and, and nourish uh, the tumor. This is what one can see in a colorectal cancer for lymphocytes. You see that you have lymphocytes in the center of the tumor, you have them in the basal margin in these lymphoid islets adjacent to the tumor. What has been really, I think, the pivotal paper about uh, more than 10 years ago uh, from our group that has m made uh, look at the immune uh, infiltration differently, particularly in colorectal cancer, is an experiment uh, or analysis that is reported here. This is an analysis of about 1,000 colorectal cancers, and when this is classified in terms of the usual TNM classification, uh, and, and this is disease-free survival, followed by about 15 years. You see that stage one and stage two cancers have a very, good, very long uh, progression-free survival, but 20 to 30 percent of them relapse. Stage four, 40, and of course, metastatic uh, cancers are all relapsing. Now, if one stratifies this on the infiltration by a certain type of lymphocytes, in, which are characterized by two markers, CD3 for T cells and CD45 for memory cells that have been introduced by Pierre Colli. So if you have both in the center of the tumor and its invasive margin, tumors with uh, a, a, a strong infiltration of these memory T cells up to stage three, the patients do better than stage one. Uh, patients in terms of PFS. I will come back to it. Even metastatic cancers do better. But in tumors, where these memory T cells have disappeared or have never been there, you see even stage one, two tumors, the patients behave as metastatic tumors. And we have applied that, and Jerome Gallon particularly has described the immunoscore, for instance here for early stage colorectal cancer, stage one, two, and you see uh, it, the immunoscore is a measure, measure of two markers in two regions, here CD8 and CD45 are old, can be CD3, CD8, followed for 20 years. Patients with an immunoscore of four have been cured, by surgery alone or surgery plus new adjuvant chemotherapy. Station, patients with immunoscore of zero, 80% relapse, and it follows the immunoscore. But what is interesting here is that the immunoscore appears to be the strongest prognostic factor, together with perforation, which fortunately happens only in 5% of cases, over the classical TNF, TNM classification for disease-free overall and disease-specific survival. And we dared to write at that time, 10 years ago, that the evaluation of the types, the density, and the location of the natural inside the immune reaction within distinct tumoral territories predicts clinical outcome better than the natural tumoral extension. And this, in some respect, forms the basis for having immunotherapeutic approaches in cancer. 
as we all know, cancers, of course, also escape the primary tumor and migrate to vessels and then go uh, lymphatic vessels, blood uh, vessels, long peri nerves, and form metastasis. Is the game played again at the metastatic site? And to make a long story short, the answer is yes. This is the measure of two cells, mature dendritic cells and CD8 T cells at the metastatic site. And this represents the overall survival from the time of the metastasis for lung metastasis of colorectal cancer. And what this shows is that if there is a strong CD8 infiltrate in the proper way, the overall survival is much better than when it is a low uh, um, infiltration of these and the median survival time is not reached here, whereas it's less than two years in this case. So we describe what we call the immune contexture, where the type of cells, are T cells, cytotoxic memory, their density and the vasal margin in the center of the tumor, their functional orientation, TH1 with production of interferon gamma IL-12, granzyme perforin granulizer and associated to cytotoxic T cells, the chemokines that attract T cells, their location again and the presence and quality of tertiary infrastructure forms immune contexture, which is a very strong prognostic factor uh, for colorectal cancer. However, there are not only T cells in, in, in the colorectal cancer and other cancers, and this is a comprehensive analysis of all immune inflammatory cells by Gabi Badia, Bindea, Jerome Gallon, and our laboratory. Um, for uh, high as the peak is, high as the density is, blue is in the center of the tumor, yellow invasive margin. And as you can see here, macrophages are the first cells in terms of density, followed by T cells. B cells are found associated with tertiary infrastructures, and you find immature dendritic cells, mast cells, IL-17 pro, IL pro-inflammatory producing cells, etc. Then if one asks the question, what cell and how does each cell density influence the uh, uh, prognostic prognosis of the patients? So this again is disease-free survival. Green is good prognosis. Red is shorter disease-free progression-free survival. You see that the myeloid cells are usually associated with poor prognosis, mast cells with poor prognosis, pro-inflammatory cells with poor prognosis, whereas, as I showed you earlier, the T, the lymphocytes, and particularly the memory T lymphocytes are associated with good prognosis. So in the, in the microenvironment, as Pierre said, of course the T cells are very good, but you have other compartments that will modulate that. And if one goes even further, in addition to all these inflammatory lymphoid cells, you have two major par partners, which are the cancer-associated fibroblasts and the endothelial cells, the vascularization, all of this forming the tumor microenvironment. And these cells, particularly fibroblasts, are rather pro-tumorogenic because they produce pro-angiogenic factors, pro-tumoral factors, angiogenic, uh, high angiogenesis, low migration of metastatic cells, etc. So we decided to analyze all the compartments of the microenvironment, and to do that, we established a meta transcriptomic signature for all cells that we could. Uh, uh, really quantitate in this microenvironment, lymphocyte, which encompasses T and NK cells, B lymphocytes, myeloid cells, fibroblasts, endothelial cells, and uh, smaller plasmacytoid dendritic cells, eosinophils, etc. And uh, 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 with this, we applied it to the analysis of 20 different cancer types. And we ask a simple question. What defines best the prognosis in terms of signature in each cell uh, tumor that we analyzed? And in colorectal cancer, which is the only one that I will discuss today, we found that the two metagenes that describe the best colorectal cancer is the one associated with cytotoxic lymphocyte and the one associated with fibroblasts. So therefore, if you are cytotoxic lymphocyte high, 
and fibroblasts slow. This is a very good prognosis. On the other hand, cytotoxic lymphocytes low and fibroblasts high, this is a very bad prognosis. It's not always the case. In other tumors, it will be cytotoxic lymphocyte myeloid cells, for instance. But in fibroblastic, uh, uh, in colorectal cancer, this is the case. So why is it so? Uh, to try to understand that, we uh, collaborate with Pierre Laurent Puig and his group to analyze the immune infiltration in colorectal cancer following that has been described in various uh, groups, particularly here by uh, uh, Joseph, our chairman, Tom Nebero, uh, and Rodrigo Dinsman, and uh, other speakers, Sabine Tepchar, Tepcha, Pierre Laurent Puig, and others, into transcriptomic. Um, define molecular su consensus molecular subgroup. Since it will be discussed a lot, I guess after my talk, I will go very rapidly here. There are four subtypes of colorectal cancer. What is important for what I will discuss now is the following. CMS1 is highly mutated. CMS2 is a canonical uh, group as a wind beta catenin MIC activation, CMS3 is metabolically dysregulated, and CMS4 as a strong stromal infiltration, TGF beta activation signature and angiogenesis. So we applied our immune signature uh, um, to, these, uh, to the analysis, and this is a French cohort of 566 colorectal cancer uh, in the terms of the uh, carte d'identité de la Ligue of the Ligue contre le cancer with Pierre Laurent Puy. And what we found that others have found as well, of course, is that the, in the IPA mutated group, you have a strong infiltration of lymphocytes, particularly cytotoxic lymphocytes. Remember here you have an increase in the number of MSI tumors, highly mutated tumors, it makes sense. Milo itself, poor endothelial, poor fibroblast. Canonical and metabolic groups are immune desertic groups. You have very little of everything. But mesenchymal group is interesting. It is infiltrated by lymphocytes, T cells, but not of the same type. They are not cytotoxic lymphocytes, and they are in the context of high monocytic lineage, as therefore inflammation, high angiogenesis and endothelial cells, high fibroblasts here. We validated it and with two other cohorts, and this is a cohort coming from Lausanne, so about 2,000 patients, uh, tumors were analyzed there. We also validated that on immunohistochemistry with a cohort coming from Toulouse, Yannick Self, in which we found that indeed for T CD8 T cells, number one is CMS1 followed by four, two and three are very low. Macrophage is the same, two and three are very low, but what defines group four is really the very high content of fibroblasts. We and others, of course, have shown that, uh, which are defined by the smooth uh, muscle actin grade that you find only in CMSMA4. And as I said, if we analyze the French court, the CMS1 is the best prognosis in terms of progression-free survival. Two and three are intermediate. Four is very low, and it comes together for overall survival. Again, four is the lowest there. If one goes a little bit deeper in, the ter in looking at the cells and the genes that are expressed in this group, CMS1 has all the genes which are good to have a, an efficient immune reaction. T cell attracting lymphocytes, chemokines, a chemokines that helps forming tertiary lymphoexpression, interferon gamma signature, IL-15, which makes proliferating T and B cells. High expression of checkpoint blockers, PD-1, PD-L1, PD-L2, CTLA-4, some inflammation, little angiogenesis, immunosuppression, complement, and strong MHC class one expression, these molecules that present the antigen to the T cells. CMS2 is desertic. You see it's blue almost everywhere, and it has very low MHC class one. CMS3 is more, uh, still very low, but has some MHC class one, and CMS4 is interesting because it doesn't have a different gamma signature, but it has T cell attracting chemokines, it has some checkpoint inhibitor expression, but in the context of strong inflammation, strong angiogenesis, 
genes involved in forming vessels, VGFB and C, strong suppression, TGF-beta, strong complement, and strong MHC class 1. How can one utilize that to guide immunotherapies? So CMS1, hypermutated, checkpoint inhibitor, strong uh, interferon gamma signature, strong PD-1, everybody is there. The obvious treatment is checkpoint blockade. And although uh, colorectal cancer was considered as a uh, resistant cancer for immunotherapy since 18 months, we know now that the MSI patients, not only in colorectal, but particularly in colorectal cancers in this group will respond to anti-PD-1 antibody, have longer progression-free and overall survival. This is the work of Dangli and uh, Garcia, Luis Garcia, Johns Hopkins. But what to do to the others? These represent, these are uh, metastatic uh, MSI colorectal cancers. They represent 3 to 5 percent of colorectal cancer. What about Group 2, the most important canonical group. I told you that they have a wind beta catenin activation. And at the same time that we were doing these experiments, there's been a work published by Tom Gajewski in melanoma showing that the melanoma intrinsic beta catenin signaling prevented anti tumor immunity. And I have no time to go into the details, but the way he sees it is the following. When you have activation of beta catenin, there is an activation of a transcription factor called ATF3, which blocks the production of the chemokine CCL4, and therefore blocks the recruitment of mature dendritic cells. You have no dendritic cells recruited. You have no um, uh, T cells, tertiary lymphoid structure forms, and therefore you have an immune desertic tumor. These tumors should be treated with beta catenin inhibitors before treating them with immunotherapy, very obviously. Number four, strong uh, stromal infiltration, TROMS, TGF beta activation, strong angiogenesis. Look at this same. Stromal infiltration, TGF beta, epithelial mesenchymal transition. <coughs> this signature has been found by Tony Ribas in uh, melanoma, very similar. EMT, angiogenesis, TGF beta, one healing, are signing a resistance to checkpoint blockade. And he published that he found this signature not only in melanoma, but in lung, in colorectal, in uh, kidney, in pancreatic, most pancreatic tumor. And you see, therefore, this mesenchymal signature is a signature of resistance to checkpoint blockade. And you have to take care of TGF beta angiogenesis before you come with your checkpoint uh, inhibitors. So to come to the conclusion, the way we uh, see uh, how uh, these analysis can guide immunotherapy is the following. In the hypermutated tumor with high T cell infiltration, TH1 orientation, and cytotoxic li um, lymphocytes, the escape mechanism is checkpoint blockade expression, and you just have just that. You, you, it will be efficient to block the blocker with the anti-checkpoint inhibitors. In the mesenchymal group, you still have high lymphocyte amyloid cells, <clears throat> but together with high angiogenesis, stromal mesenchymal cell, the escape mechanism is hypoxia, TGF beta, PD-1 axis, and then one has to come with anti-angiogenic, anti-TGF beta before coming out together with checkpoint blockade. And the canonical and metabolic group with low lymphocytic amyloid cell infiltration, either you can make them hot tumors by anti-beta cadenin and, and inhibitors, but they have low MHC class 1 expression, and once you have made them hotter and have some expression, you have to bring your T cells either by CAR T cells or by specific antibodies as have been introduced earlier. So for the general conclusions, the tumors come into two parts. The immunogenic tumors with new antigens induced by various ways presented on MHC class 1. Mature and this cells pick them up in tertiary lymphoid structures, activate T, CD4 and CD8 T cells as well as B cells. A TH1 response activates uh, M1 macrophages, antibody being produced, the tumor is controlled. 
Some tumors have a dysregulation in chemokine gene, in genes expression chemokines and cytokines. For instance, TGF beta, IL6, VGF. These will induce fibroblasts, associated, cancer associated fibroblasts, which produce VGF, induce M2 macrophages that downregulate the immune reaction, high disrupted angiogenesis, uh, and immature dendritic cells activating T-Rex that will block this response. And immunotherapy in these tumors will have to work on both sides of the tumor. So what I presented to you is the work of Etienne Besch, Nicolas Giraldo, Florent Petitpré, um, La Croix Letia La Croix Sarah Bourras, Catherine Sotas Friedman, in strong collaboration with the group of Jérôme Gallon, and the very strong collaboration for colorectal of Sylvie Job, Pierre Laurent Puy, and Aurélien de Reliès, and uh, surgeons and uh, um, immunologists at uh, the hospital. Thank you very much for your attention.